Hey guys, hope you are doing good. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to see four interesting applications of window functions. All these are commonly asked in company interviews. We are going to try to solve this using SQL. Okay. Let's begin right away. The first concept is called as cumulative sum. So in this data, as you see for different months, right? Starting from January to May for this company called Voltas, we have the sales numbers. Okay. Fictitious numbers, 6,000, 7,000, 7,500, 8,000, 8,500. Okay. Suppose we want to find the cumulative sales. What is cumulative sales? So at the end of the first month, it is 6,000. At the end of the second month, it should be 6,000 plus 7,000, which is 13,000 and so on. Okay. This is what is cumulative sales concept. How can we do that using SQL? So I'll select star, right? Whatever data we already have. And then simply we can say sum of sales. Okay. This is how you'll do cumulative sum and you can say over and then simply order by month num. Okay. As simple as that, right? Just one line you write and I can call this as cumulative sales. Let me run this. Let's see what we get. As you see, now we got a new column called as cumulative sales. So it's 6,000 here. Next month, the 7,000 gets added up. It became 13,000. Then next month, another 7,500 got added up. It's 20,500 and so on. Okay. So essentially, this is how you can do cumulative sales. So you simply say sum of that column over and then you order by. In our case, we are ordering by month num. Okay. So this is how you will do cumulative sum. Very interesting concept which can be done using SQL. Second concept here. So we have, you know, the names of various companies, right? HDFC Bank, ICIC Bank which belong to the banking industry and their profits, right? Again, fictitious numbers. Then we have FMCG industry, some companies, then some companies in IT industry. Suppose we want to rank them according to their profits in their particular industry. How can we do that? Just think about it for a couple of seconds. So I'll just select everything as usual. So I want to rank them, right? So I want to rank them in their particular industry by profit. So I can say rank over okay obviously i want to partition by the industry right and also order by profit descending right the company with the highest profit in this industry should get rank one let me give it an alias name as maybe uh, ranking or something okay so that's it right so rank over partition by industry because we want to get the ranking per industry and order by profit descending because we want to give the companies with the highest profit the higher rank. So when we run this, let's see what happens. As you see in the banking industry, HDFC is highest, but then ICIC and Axis both have 4,200. As you guys know, according to ranking concept, if the numbers are the same, we get the same rank. Next company in that industry, IOB, right? Their profit is 3,200. And why do we get the number four here for ranking? Because when we do rank, when there are repeating numbers for a particular rank, the next number gets skipped. So here there are two twos. So three will get skipped and we're directly moving to four. Okay. Then in FMCG, there's no problem. There's no same number. So they get rank one, two, three. Then again, when I come to IT industry, both Infosys and HCL have the same profit 4,800. Both get rank one. Since there are two first ranks, number two will get skipped. Wipro gets rank three. Okay. In the same situation, if I were to use dense rank instead of rank, what do you think will happen? Let's run this and see. So here what happens is 4,200 ICIC and access get rank two, but then the next company IOP gets rank three. So no number gets skipped. Similarly, if I move down Infosys HCL get rank one, Wipro will get rank two, no number gets skipped. So this is the important difference between a rank and a dense rank. Keep that in mind. Common interview question again. This is how you can do a comparison of peers using rank or dense rank function. Next scenario, assume that we are given some data about, uh, you know, companies like Colgate, Nestle and Britannia for various years, their sales. Suppose we want to find year on year increase or decrease in sales. How can we do that? How can we use window functions to do that? So again, it's same scenario. So I can select everything as usual. And then I can do lag, right? Lag is like to get the previous row value. So I can say lag of sales over. And here again, we need to partition by company, right? We want to find the previous sales value in the previous year for that particular company. 
and then you can say order by year okay and then i can give it an alias name like previous sales right so this is how this will work so when i run this now you see so britannia 2017 sales was 7500 there's no previous year data so it's null 2018 sales was 9000 previous year what was the sales it was 7500 and that is what we are getting here 2019 britannia sales 9900 previous year sales was 9000 that's what we are getting here right same case applies for all these companies so nestle 2017 8000 there's no previous year data it's null 7200 in 2018 previous year is 8000 that's what we are getting here final year 10800 2019 previous year was 7200 that's what we are getting here okay so now what can we do here like we can like put this into a with class right let's say with final as or something like that right this is how i would do it uh all right so now in this what we have to do is simply select let's say let's select year company and percentage change right so you can do sales minus previous sales right the difference and divide it by the previous sales that will give you like percentage change right let me put this in a bigger bracket and let me call it percent change or something okay from final okay let's run and see what we get as you see yeah Britannia it increased by 20% if you want to see uh, the other data also we can bring that back so we can also see sales and previous year sales okay so just to see those numbers as you see uh, from 7500 it went up to 9000 so 20% increase then previous year was 9000 it went up to 9900 10% increase and so on right this is how you can do calculation so for Nestle 2017 was 8000 next year it went down to 7200 so it was a minus 10 percent basically 10 percent decrease so again so to do year on year changes we can just do lag of the particular column partition by you know the specific variable here it is company and then order by year right so that it's in an ascending order then you can just find the percentage difference using this formula okay another interesting application this time we are using lag function finally right like stock market data commonly asked interview question again how can we find moving averages again i have some data about like tcs here price right for 3rd feb 2022 4th feb 2022 and so on how can we find say like three day moving average using window functions okay so i'll as usual select everything and here so i need to find the average so i can obviously put average of price right that particular column and then obviously over there's only one company so no need to do partition obviously you want to do it like ordered by date right that's important now to find three day moving average what do you include here what do you incorporate so we have to use the rows between clause so we'll say for three day moving average you can say rows between two preceding and current row okay so basically the two previous rows and the current row you take an average of those three values and I can say as moving three average, right? I can give it some random name. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Rows between two previous values and the current row value. When I run it, let's see what we get. So obviously first row, there's no previous value. So it will give the same value as the moving average for three day. So it's the same 3200. For the second row, there's no two previous, there's only one previous. So it will basically do average of these two numbers, which is 3250. And that's what we get here. For the third row, obviously there's two preceding. So it was going to do an average of these three rows. What is average of 3200, 3300 and 3250? It is 3250, right? That's what we get here. Moving to the next row, what is this doing? Just think for a minute. Obviously it is doing these three rows, right? Two preceding and that row, average of these three. Average of these three is nothing but 3300. That is what we get here. And finally this row, what is happening again two preceding so essentially it will do the average of these three rows average of this is i think it will be 9850 divided by three which is like uh yeah three to eight three point three three this is what we get 
This is what you see in stock market data. They say three day moving average, seven day moving average, so on, right? As part of analysis. So this is what it is. We can use the rows between class and like average and also use the over class to kind of arrive at this result. In this case, there's only one company. So we didn't use partition by. If there was stock market data of multiple companies, we would have also added partition by company or something. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've attached all this data like in a CSV file in our description section. Have a look at it. Give it a try. I'll see you again in another video. Till then, take care.